So I thought it was about time that I did an astrophotography gear tour of what I use to capture my images of the night sky. I'm going to be going through each of the components and my general thoughts on them and how they all hang together. Some things like the telescope, it's my first telescope, so I don't really have anything else to base the opinion on, but some other components, they're my second or third iterations. So this is my setup for 2024 and probably well into 2025 thanks to the economy, but this is where we are, so you dance with what you brung. Before I get started on the main event, which is all of this gear, I need to actually talk about the platform that it all sits on, so let's fix that now. So there we go. This is the current mount setup that I have. So in short, we've got a ZWO AM5 harmonic drive mount, using the ZWO tripod and pier extension, and it's all powered by an EcoFlow River Max battery. So to start with the EcoFlow River Max battery, this has really suited me. This will easily do an entire night's imaging, eight, 10 hours through winter if I'm lucky, including dew heaters and everything, and it's got plenty, plenty of capacity. What I also like about this battery is that it's got a nice fast charge cycle. So if you have forgotten to give it a charge before your night's imaging, it doesn't take too long to get too much in it. The battery will sit very conveniently in the little baggie here underneath the tripod. And with the weight of it, it just gives the tripod uh, a lot of extra stability. I don't need to use counterweights. My whole setup weighs under 10 kilos. So weight and toppling isn't an issue, but the battery sitting down in there just does give me a bit of peace of mind. Tripod, really like it. Carbon fiber, nice and light. Now, previous to this, I've had the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount and its tripod. Whereas this one from my setup, it's good and lightweight and portable, and I'm not having to lug extra heavy gear around. The mount, the AM5. So previously I've had an EQ6R Pro. Got a little video up here comparing the weight between the two mounts. The ZWO I'm extremely happy with. It wasn't that I was unhappy with the Skywatcher, but it's heavy, it is heavy. This, I'd rather be hauling this around uh, rather than the Skywatcher head. Oh Christ, and I'm not exaggerating. Between the AM5 and the EQ6R Pro, my guiding statistics, honestly, it felt very much same, same. So I didn't necessarily get better performance out of the AM5, but certainly I didn't get less performance compared to the Skywatch amount. And I also don't have to worry about that fine tuning the balance each night. I can just throw my scope on this and within five minutes I'm set up, ready to polar align. It's great. So that's the mount set up. Let's now get back to the main event, what you're probably wanting to see more than anything else, which is the scope and its accessories. And we're back. This is my current astrophotography platform. Just going to go from tip to tail, running through the various bits and my thoughts on them. So of course, a telescope. This is a William Optics Fluorostar 91 telescope. It's a triplet refractor. It's the first telescope that I ever got. So I don't have any other telescopes to reference my experience to, but generally I've been quite happy with it. The focusing is good. The lens cover has a little Batonov mask in there, which helps for getting basic focusing. You'll notice that I've got an EAF, which I'll talk about soon, but having the Batonov mask does allow you to quickly get at least, at least a semi-decent focus ready to run an automated focus routine. Something else I like about the Fluorostar is that it's got a rotator built into the back here so we can uh, rotate the camera to get the framing of our target just so. I've really enjoyed having that. The other component to the telescope is the reducer flattener. Now this is the 0.8 reducer. It's caused me some problems. So I was chasing 
for quite a while what I thought was some back focus or some tilt issues because I had stars that were pinched in the corners. And I wasted so many nights and tried many different adapters trying to calibrate that out. What I've found sort of in, in the year or so that I've had this is that this particular reducer, it's kind of known for not being great in the corners. Now, I wish I had realized this before I'd invested so much time and a bit of money trying to fix the issue. The one times flattener, as I understand it, doesn't really suffer from the same problem. But at the time that I was buying all of this, this reducer, it's about 450 in Australian dollars. The one times flattener, it was $1,000. And this, if you go and price it up, it's not a cheap scope. And I was already spending quite a bit of money. So I went with the reducer instead. By the way, just about everything I talk about in this video is linked down in the description off to Agena Astro or High Point Scientific. So you can go and check the bits out for yourself. These days, pinch stars are less of an issue thanks to tools like PixInsight in conjunction with Blur Exterminator. Blur Exterminator pretty much negated my issue of pinch stars in the corner. Now, some might sort of think, well, maybe it's a bit of cheating. Maybe you want to get your gear dialed in as best you can. Look, to be honest, I just want to take pictures of stars. I want to capture nebula. I want to make great images and not be stuffing around losing nights to calibration. So I'll take Blur Exterminator. And as you can see by the images that are on the screen at the moment, the difference is significant and certainly when you're not pixel peeping, there is no issues at all. Now, while I've been happy with the focal length of the Fluorostar 91, I am starting to think that maybe there's going to be another telescope in my future at some point, hopefully. Um, but I wouldn't mind something that's about double the focal length. Maybe something like an Ascar 120, not entirely sure. If you've got some suggestions of longer focal length telescopes that uh, I might be considering, why don't you chuck them down in the comments for me? That'd be great. So moving down from the tip, you see here I've got a couple of Jew heaters. Uh, look, they, these are just no-name Jew heaters that I got a local Australian astronomy supplier. They do the trick. I haven't suffered from Jew, and you can see I've got one each on both the main scope and the guide scope. So speaking of the guide scope, this is the ZWO 30F4 guide scope, and it's paired with the ASI 120MM-S camera. Now, technically, this was my first Astro camera, but I'd always gotten it for guiding. It does the job, what can I say? Um, my guiding has been more than acceptable. You can get away with a lot at this focal length. We're about 430 mil, somewhere around there with, with the reducer on here. Uh, so my guiding has always been really acceptable. And one thing too, I focus this once. And in the, I think the three plus years that I've had it, I haven't focused it since, and my guiding still remains really good. Now next is the ASI Air Pro. So before I got the ASI Air Pro, I did try setting up a laptop. I had Nina, I had SharpCap, I had PhD2, etc. Yeah, there was days that I lost getting that thing configured because at the time I didn't really have a mentor for uh, how I should be setting things up. So I was just reading forums, etc. Unfortunately, the laptop, the battery in it just wouldn't last long enough. So I'd only be able to get a one and a half hour imaging session out of it before the battery died. And that's if the thing just didn't play up generally. So it was causing me a lot of frustrations. Once I went to the ASI Air, I, I haven't looked back. So I'm not gonna go so far as to say I'm a fanboy, but if you want simple, quick, get your astrophotography up and running with the least amount of frustrations, this certainly worked for me. There's other mini computers out there that I haven't used, obviously, so there's probably better stuff than this. But as far as I'm concerned, it really helped kickstart my astrophotography journey, especially once all the automation started to kick in. And this is what I'm going to be talking about as we work through to the end of the setup. Something that I've also got, which is a little bit different, 
is my uh, SD card reader. Now technically the ASIA Pro, uh, you can use a USB memory stick uh, into it. I just wasn't overly happy with that each time taking it in and out after a night's imaging. And I'd read more than one or two comments on forums and Facebook about the USB connectors in the ASIA Pro sometimes failing on people. So I actually use this SD card reader, which is hooked up permanently to the ASIA, and all I need to do is just grab my card straight out of this, and I have a lot of confidence that I'm not ever gonna have any damage. So down here, we've got the ZWO EAF, the Electronic Automatic Focuser. Huge fan of this. If you haven't gotten a sense already, I really don't like to be fiddling around and getting frustrated. This helps me not only get my initial focus a lot better, but the automated refocusing throughout the evening. So the EAF via the ASIA Pro will refocus the scope, and I generally have it to refocus on any two degree change in the ambient temperature or every two hours. Sometimes I might tell it to refocus every hour. But having that peace of mind, knowing that the system is just going to refocus automatically for me and I don't have to be going up and checking on it, this was a great purchase. Any telescope that I get going forward, I'll always get an EAF for it. It won't necessarily be a ZWO, and I'll acknowledge it probably sounds like I am a ZWO fanboy. I'm not. It just happens to be the gear and the ecosystem that I found myself in. And to be honest, I'm happy with it. So moving on down, Depending on how eagle-eyed you are, you might be wondering what this is. So this is a GERD CTU, a camera tilting unit. This is what I bought when I was trying to chase down those pinch corners, thinking that it was a result of tilt. I got the GERD because I wanted the filter wheel to be hard up against the camera, which meant that I no longer had access to the camera's tilt adjustment. And look, this is a high quality bit of gear. It was really hefty. I've got a video where I've installed it. You can go and have a look at that if you like. It's not pretty, by the way. And whilst it did help with some of the corners, I could never eliminate it totally. And yeah, these days I don't care anymore because I've got Blur Exterminator to take care of it for me. So on to the filter wheel. Yep, it's another ZWO product. This is the ZWO 36 millimeter filter holder and it will hold seven filters. So the filter wheel via the ASIA Pro is configured to change the filter after say every two hours on one of the filters, it'll automatically move to the next. And because of how the whole system hangs together, on a filter change, the EAF will also automatically do a refocus for me. So it works, what can I say? Inside it is a set of Antlia filters. Now this is the Antlia LRGB and HA, S3 and O2 filters. They're the first set of broadband and narrowband filters that I've ever had. I've been really happy with them. If you've gone and priced filters, you'll know that the Antlias are kind of mid-tier pricing. So what I've noticed with them, I don't get any flaring. They're supposed to be par focal, but even being par focal because of EAF, I get to refocus anyway. Now, I would have liked to have gotten the two inch filters over the 36 millimeter ones so I could future proof my setup in case I ever went to a full frame camera one day. But to be honest, the price was just too much. The filter wheel needed to be bigger and the larger filters themselves really jacked that price up into something that I wasn't prepared to pay at the time. For more information on that and how to install the filters into the filter wheel, I've got a video on that as well. And the last piece of the puzzle. This is a ZWO ASI 2600mm Pro camera. Before the monochrome, I did have the one-shot colour, so I did start with the ZWO ASI 2600MC. Now the MC was great. 
I got some great images with it. I was using the Optolong LX Stream filter, the dual band filter for one shot color cameras. So I was able to chase the targets that I enjoy. So I, I prefer shooting nebulas and it did a really great job compared to my baseline of my Canon R5 with normal Canon lenses. When I got to 2600MC, I thought it was pretty good, but I knew mono was better. But mono was so much more of an investment once you include the filter wheel and the filters. A year later, I caved. I got the MM Pro here along with the filter wheel and the Antlia filters. And the first night that I saw my first three minute exposure of the Dragons of Ara in Hydrogen Alpha, ah, blown away. I now said to myself, I've arrived. This is what I wanted to be getting out of my astrophotography. Of course, with the benefit of hindsight and hey, well, unlimited funds, I wish I'd gone mono from the get-go. Here we are now, and I'm more than happy with the setup as it is at the moment. And I've actually created a playlist which will feature all the other videos which I've referenced as I've gone through. We're usually installing different parts. I did an unboxing of the AM5, etc. So you can go and check that out too if you like.